Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Danny Lambert with Plush Republic. I'm going to be running you through how to set up Google Optimize using Google Tag Manager today. Uh, so the things you'll need to get started are a Google Analytics account, a Google Optimize account, and a Google Tag Manager account. <clears throat> Excuse me. You'll notice that in the background here, I'm within Google Optimize, and this is what your landing page should look like when you log in. I already have my container set up here, but what you would do when you log in for the first time is click Create Account. It'll prompt you to give it a company name, which is what you see in the background, and you can select any of these three. I suggest selecting all of them uh, because there's no downside to letting your data help Google improve their products. Benchmarking uh, and in-depth analysis is really no downside to selecting those. Uh, at the bottom here, you'll just have to acknowledge their terms of service and hit accept. I'm going to skip that, seeing as how I've already done it. Uh, so I'll close out of this window. And there's that container that you would have created. So let me click into this. Now I'm in Google Optimize. I'm going to move this video over. You'll see the steps to setting up your account on the right over here. Uh, so the first part you would do is manage your account uh, and users to your account. I can always edit my container details, which is essentially just the name of it right there. Uh, but that is where you would manage just the details. The second step would be to link your Google Analytics account. Uh, so this is where it comes in handy to have that set up. Otherwise, you'd be SOL at this stage. Uh, so make sure you have your Google Analytics account set up. You would just click Edit Link, and it will automatically pull uh, the Analytics accounts that you can link to. Uh, so I have mine set up right there. I select All Website Data and hit save. Uh, the next step would be to install the optimized snippet. Uh, so this is where you'll tie in Google Tag Manager and you will also tie in the, a little bit of coding for your website. So I'll click the third step and hit view snippet. When I do this, uh, it'll give you the instructions to implement it uh, in your regular coding, but having Google Tag Manager will make this a lot easier. Uh, you'll notice that it just tells you to append this code to your Google Tag that already exists. Uh, so I'll go into Google Tag Manager next and keep note that this number right here is my optimize ID. When I'm in Tag Manager, I already have one set up, but I would just go into Tags, click New, name it Google Optimize Tag, and Configure. Within here, they make it very convenient because they'll have a Google Optimize option. So if I click that, all it asks for is my Google Analytics tracking ID which I can grab right from my analytics account, so I'll click here. Uh, I'm in admin. If I back up, this will look more familiar. Click property settings. And copy and paste that tracking ID. Where I mentioned before was the optimized container ID. That's what's going to go in here, so I'll click back. Grab that ID, which is right here. And drop that in there. And we're almost done setting up that tag. All we have to do next is set up our triggering which I would want to trigger on all pages, and this would be good to go. I don't have to click Save because I've already uh, implemented this tag, but here you would click Save, and then just publish it like any of your other tags. Now, after that's set up, I'll go back in here, and there's I don't have to actually put this on my site now because that's Tag Manager implementing it. The only thing you will need to implement is a second tag. Uh, so you'll notice they have this minimize page flickering, You'll want to copy this script and paste it into your head file right above where your Google Tag Manager is, right? Because the Google Tag Manager is implementing the optimized code from the screen before, and then this will implement the anti-flicker. So when it's changing variations of your page, uh, it won't be flickering seeing one for a second and the other loading. And I'll show you where you put that. Uh, so I'm a WordPress user. If you're a WordPress user, this is very simple. You would come into your site files. You would come down, let me move my screen over again. Come down to Appearance, click Editor, and then I want to find my head file. Here it is, header.php. So you see there's where I implemented Google Tag Manager, and then I copy and pasted that anti-flickering script right above it. Uh, and that's all you would need to do is put the script for the flickering that, and make sure it's above your Tag Manager come down to the bottom and update this file and you're good to go. You can log out of your CMS. Now, uh, you're done with Google Tag Manager, so I can close that. You're done with Google Analytics, so I can close that as well. Uh, and now, 
click done, minimize this. And all you have to do from here is create an experiment and start an experiment. And to Google's credit, they've made this process very seamless and very easy to implement. So I'll go ahead and create an experiment, call it test experiment. And what website is this for? I'll make it for my home page here. Copy and paste that. Uh, so they have some documentation on what these different tests are. Uh, so if you're not familiar with the difference between an A-B test, a multivariate test, and a redirect, uh, check out the link in my description and that will give you an explanation. I don't want to go too far in the weeds on that here. Uh, but essentially an A-B test is testing two different variants. A multivariate test uh, can be multiple variations on a single page testing which is optimized the best. And a redirect test is testing two unique URLs against each other. Uh, so if I cloned it and created two completely separate pages and wanted to see which would perform better, that's where a redirect test would come in handy. Um, but for now, I'm going to do an A-B test and click Create. So once I'm in here, this is my original. I can preview that. I'm going to minimize this now so you can see everything easier. I want to create a new variant. So I'll click New Variant and call it Test Variant. Ooh, sorry. You can always edit the variant information by coming into here. And then on the side, you can also update all the experiment information. So I want test experiment, the editor page being this, my Google Analytics properties plus or public, and I want this triggering on all website data. So all this information looks good. Now I can go ahead, if I want to make the adjustments to the test variant, I can click in on it, save and continue. and it brings me into this editing mode. So here's my website, and what's really nice about the way that they set this up is I can just edit this in line. Uh, so if I want to edit this element, edit the text, change this to just say marketing and growth instead of digital marketing and growth, I can do that, click done, and click save. And that will be my new variation. That's all there is to it. I'll make another video about uh, the different types of variations. You can change the color, you can change buttons, you can change copy. Uh, it's essentially endless possibilities. But now I can preview them and just make sure that that works. Right? I'll click Web Preview. This is my home page in the original state, so this is the first variation. And then this is the second variation. And again, this isn't a great example because uh, I only changed copy, and this is most certainly going to test as less, less effective, um, but it's giving you a general gist of, of the kind of power that it has here. So I'll hop back in. I have my first variant, which is my uh, constant, and then my test variant. So now, I don't have any set up in this environment, but if you had objectives that you wanted to test, uh, you could do it from here. And I could actually do. I have macro conversions. So for me, this is anyone who converts on a form and ends up on my thank you page. So I want to see, in this experiment, uh, how many conversions do I get, macro conversions, between the two variations. So here I'm changing the copy on the home page. This is a description for you or a hypothesis, essentially notes uh, for yourself to see how you're performing and why you set this up. On the second page, you get to select your targeting options. So the percentage of your overall visitors to target, which I will typically do as 100%, uh, and you can weight it more or less in favor of one variation. And the very important part that you need to put here is when this is going to load. I only want this to be loading for 100% of the traffic visiting my home page. So you'll notice that I have the URL of my home page here. Uh, if this had been, if URL contains plusherpublic.com, it could be on any uh, page on my site that starts with that. So you want to make sure you have the correct uh, matching criteria here so your experiment runs when it should. And then after all that, I'm ready to go. Sorry. I can save this. And then by clicking Start Experiment, this experiment will be ready to go and I'll get a full slate of analytics. Uh, essentially, I would like to run it for a minimum of two weeks and then after that point, I can analyze it. I'm going to be making a follow-up video as to how to analyze your experiments a bunch of different variations that you can create. Uh, so be on the lookout for those on my channel and I'll add links to all the supporting materials in the description. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. 
uh, and share with your friends, anyone who you think may be interested. In oh, this new crazy mother...